Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volkswagen Touareg first. The Touareg has both spring and air suspension. Pneumatics are appreciated by lovers of comfort and of road, where 30 cm of ground clearance come in handy. The spring was installed only on budget versions, but now it's more and more common in cars that were originally on Pneuma, but then the owners realized that he didn't pull the maintenance of the system. And this is not surprising. The original prices for air springs are such that for the cost of 3-4 such suspension kits you can take an external restyle to a rig entirely. Simply changing the cylinders to Chinese Arnott or Bilstein means condemning yourself to constant control of both the performers and alternations. All repair operations serve several times less than the original racks, although for 3-5 years you can breathe a sign of relief if you go through everything completely. In addition to the racks, the compressor and the valve block may fail, but fortunately for the owners, they are only locks for good quality. Every small thing, such as fittings, level sensors, pipes, etc. also matters. Keeping all this is incredibly expensive and troublesome, so you shouldn't throw too many stones at those who throw out all this economy and put on ordinary springs. Aluminum levers with non-replaceable ball arms at the age of 10 plus is a potential $40-$50,000 for budget repairs of a slightly tapping suspension. A complete bulk head at the price can easily step over 150 only for on a spring suspension and with partial use of the non-original. With runs of 150 plus, not only silent blocks and ball bearings but also hubs may well be killed. And for some lovers of feeling without disassembling their roads, stretchers also burst. In general, the chassis is strong, but if you operate the car carelessly, then you can easily and naturally pay up to a third of the cost to repair it. A conventional power steering with a variable force rail is quite reliable, unless the rail is heavily loaded and therefore knocks and broken side bushings are more common than usual. Rides in the mud with cracked anthers usually serves at the beginning of the end. The rail is located low and picks up dirt immediately, after which corrosion finishes off the stem itself. Power steering pump from ZF which allows you to find cheap analogs if you wish. There are Torex with pumps even from Schneeva. The layout of the cars is classic, which means that there is a separate front gearbox, a transfer case and two propeller shafts. Potentially problematic components include the rear propeller shaft and front gearbox. The CV joints are strong enough and in general the mechanics are made with a good margin of safety. True, this reserve may not be enough if there are serious faults in the transmission, for example in months of driving on a giant box shifting with jerks can easily destroy the hinges and at the same time the tear gearbox. If you come across a car with a manual gearbox, then you will have only two problems, one big to sell it later and the second is small with a dual mass flywheel. Otherwise, everything works surprisingly reliably. Or maybe there are a few cars in this configuration and their breakdowns are not noticeable against the background of the number of problems with the automatic transmission. For the Traurek, Volkswagen bought a license for the new Isen 6-speed automatic transmission. In Volkswagen designation it is 09D and the Japanese catalog it's TR60SN. The box is very strong in any case, Toyota did not hesitate to put this series on the Land Cruiser and large Lexus, but the performance for Volkswagen has its own nuances. There are no questions about the mechanical part of the transmission, it can withstand even such monstrous engines as V10 or W12, in any case it doesn't die right away but serves 120,000 or even 150,000 before the first repairs. It's just that the chances of a breakdown with such motors are naturally higher and there are more problems with the resource of the planetary gear and hydraulics. Most all troubles begin with the valve body. At Volkswagen it's turned very aggressively compared to similar boxes at Toyota and the resource mainly depends on the driver. The setting made possible to intensively use the floating lockup of the torque converter during intensive acceleration and for driving comfort, full lockup is performed only in established driving modes. When partially blocked, wear on the lining slats to very rapid oil contamination. And dirty oil, as you know, wears out the valve body and the oil pump, at the same time killing the box seals. As a result, there is a drop in operating pressure and an increase in temperature, which kills the clutches and bushings. Valve body wear is expressed mainly in the deterioration of the quality of the blocking of the gas turbine engine and jerks during the operation of the Q1 package, from first to fourth speeds. This is the so-called first bell. 
all resource problems are noticeably exacerbated by overheating. The radiator at the box is large and the thermostat is set to an adequate 75 degrees. But in traffic jams and on the highway, the box easily warms up to temperatures of 100 plus. And with a dirty package of radiators, even 140 plus, which dramatically reduces its resource. The version with the heat exchanger in the system is no better, where overheating occurs mainly due to the clogging of the heat exchanger with pollution products from ATP. The situation is somewhat aggravated by the fact that the official regulations for changing the oil did not provide for at all, and the original ATF cost inadequate money, around 80 dollars per liter. Now the price has dropped 3-4 times, so nothing prevents you from changing oil more often every 30-40 thousand. Until 2005 on the Torex, there were extremely unsuccessful first revision of bell bodies. But now they are almost never met. They could rarely pass more than 100,000 without major repairs, and now they mostly come across options after a serious restoration with Sonox kits. Basically, they were changed to new ones since until the very end of the release of the model of repair solenoids, there were no sales. Newer well bodies have a better resource, and parts for their restoration are on sale, from solenoids and wiring to hydraulic accumulators and rods. But the repair process still requires high qualifications and doesn't always go well. The situation is complicated by the fact that Icin, unlike ZF, in Russia doesn't have a certified service that would perform factory restoration with a guarantee. As the distributor, the motor for switching modes and its electrician, including the position sensor, most often fails. During repairs, you need to install its last version. For example, with the code OAD.341.601.C. The hardware itself with motors up to V8 inclusive serves for a long time, but provided that the log drive motor and the position sensor are in good working order. Cars with V10 and W12 tear apart the transmission in the literal sense of the word, twisting the forks of the propeller shaft, breaking the case of the transfer case, all its guts and the rear axle at the same time. The firm gearbox breaks down in all versions, not only powerful ones. Thanks to the thought-out cooling system, it's cooled by hot air from the motor. As a result, the bearings fail and then the main pair if the hole and oil leaks are ignored for too long. With runs a little over 100, it's already rather checking the unit for dryness and listening to the sounds when driving along walls and in tunnels, since sound insulation masks the process to the last. But the propeller shaft is not masked, gentle blows to the armist are familiar to many owners of old Torex. This is how a dead outboard bearing manifests itself. And here the shaft is one piece, so we have to go to a specialized workshop for a replacement. Many collective firms support the support, putting pieces of hose, this can even hold out for a year or two. Complexity and age are main reasons why the Torex is sent to the dismantling table. This aspect concerns motors in full measure. A tight layout, a tight and dirty package of radiators, weak and capricious fuel pumps in the tank and the clearly excessive complexity of most systems. No one argues the technical elegance is at its best, but all auxiliary engine systems are not only quality and improved performance, but also great chances of air leaks and leaks on older cars, unnecessary costs for the cooling system and as a result, sooner or later, potential the amount of investment is much higher than the market value of the car. There were a lot of gasoline engines for the Torek, but the bulk of cars on the market are VR6 versions with a volume of 3.2 and 3.6 liters, V8s of two generations are less common, and the W12 is not exactly exotic. You can find them on sale, but the choice will be in several copies for the whole country. The VR6 3.2 liter is a 24 valve engine well known from other Volkswagen models. Many consider these motors to be very strong and reliable, and in general they are right. The motor is not bad structurally, but there are also enough nuances. First of all, it's worth recalling that the chains are located on the flywheel side, there are two of them, and their resource is not outstanding. They can travel 150, maximum 200,000 km before the first repairs. And if the dead dampers and tensioner are not replaced in time, then the chains themselves will have to be changed, and this requires the removal of the motor or box. In general, the removal of the motor on the Torek is practiced regularly, not only with this VR6. The resource of the chains itself can be up to 300,000, but subject to good oil unreleased pacifiers and a calm style of movement. 
You can view the status of the timing using the VCDS scanner. With readings of a discrepancy of more than 5 degrees, repair is shiny. With readings of 8 degrees, urgent repair. In general, writing and jiggling chains is not an option. The price of spare parts for repairing the timing belt is now about $600, not including small things and sealants. The second surprise is the design of ventilation of crankcase gases, Ukiji. It's generally extremely capricious on engines of the period 2000-2010 at Volkswagen. A torn VKG veiled membrane usually leads to a decent increase in oil consumption with good chances to put piston rings on and finish off the engine by detonation. The valve price is surprisingly high for such a simple part. Dying coils are seemingly not scary, but on this motor, any ignition interruptions create a strong vibration. In addition, the membrane flies in the vacuum actuator of the intake manifold flaps. The oil pump and liners do not like long oil change intervals. This is fraught with a drop in pressure, especially with runs over 200. If you follow the engine and change the oil on time, do not overheat, then the piston will travel 300 350,000 km. Maybe more, but associated problems usually increase. The V6 3.6 FSI engine also belongs to the VR6 family, but this is a newer generation. The block is different with a smaller camber angle and the injection is not distributed but direct. In terms of the mechanical and vacuum parts, the motor turned out to be even stronger in something. In any case, liner seizures and problems with WikiG are noticeably less common. The timing resource, however, is just as short-lived and its price is even slightly higher. Moreover, it's less tolerant of high revolutions, rockets sometimes twist due to wage valves. In general, those Torek buyers who were specifically waiting for the restyling to buy the corrected very badly miscalculated. Direct injection, even with a cast iron block, greatly worsens the condition of the piston group, where during cold starts is noticeably greater, but most importantly, the oil scrapper ring cokes its box shaped here, and the oil drain in it sours tightly after the first 100,000 run. Also, direct injection also cokes the intake valves. Cracks in the block are occasionally found, it's very lightweight, and this increases its vulnerability in case of improper actions by a repairman. And what is more unpleasant, the intake clogged with soot greatly reduces the power already by 50,000 mileage. According to the measurements of cars with a range of under 100, there even 200 forces are not recruited. In general, for normal operation you need to clean the intake, use special oils or change the piston and do not forget about the timing belt and its features. The most reliable engine on the tow rack is the V8 4.2 AX cube which was installed before restyling. Aluminum block, cast iron sleeves, timing belt drive and from the front, so removing the motor for replacement is not required. There are two main difficulties. The high cost of tensioners for intershaft chain space regulators and the capricious VKG system. But the consumption is less than that of the VR6 and the thrust is greater. In repair, the motor is also easier, you need to remove it only with the capital, to which it can drive 300 for 100,000 with minimal maintenance. Of course, it's necessary to change the timing belt on time to prevent shafting of the thermostat pipe when the belt is loosened and also to monitor the supports and the tightness of the intake, coils and wiring. In general, there are two disadvantages, high transport tax and limited choice in the secondary housing. There are quite a few cars with this V8. But the V8 4.2 FSI of the BRR series on the post restyle Torek is exactly the opposite, the most problematic engine of all. This is a completely new line of engines here and a timing belt with four chains on the flywheel side are direct injection and what is most unpleasant and a loose coating on the cylinders. It's slightly more powerful than the old engine and in theory more economical, but in fact it rides worse, requires more fuel and dies earlier. There are many reasons. The new design of the timing belt looks like a work of art, but in practice it's an insanely overcomplicated design in which the plastic of the dampers cannot withstand engine temperatures and revolution per minute. The chains themselves stretch quite quickly when vibrated. A dirty intake and suit of fraud with errors and loss of power, and in the case of a loose power engines, also cylinder scuffing. Direct injection during cold stars is also harmful to Alusil. True, most of the motors are already caused with cast iron, but not always with high quality. 
and squished sleeves, a curved plane of the block and other problems after a low quality repair lead to the need for regular repairs. Don't believe me? Look at the happy owners of the platform Audi Q7. This engine is found there more often, which means that the owners have more pain. The car entered the market with very remarkable inline fives of 2.5 liters of the BAC and BLK series, which after 2005 were replaced by modernized versions of BPD and BPE. And there are still a lot of cars with such motors on the market. Why do I find these motors unusual? Five cylinders in a row, camshaft and injection pump drive with gears, pump injectors, steel manifolds and an aluminum block without liners. More precisely, the liners are formed by plasma spraying. At the time, it was a technology that was unique in the automotive industry. It would seem what could have gone wrong. Usually, when it comes to the problems of this motor, the first thing to remember is the delamination of the liner material. Moreover, the teasers here are not like a alusil. The block doesn't not just bully, but can immediately jam tightly. If the bully has gone, then the motor is no longer a tenant. It will not work a little while wasting oil. Shocks complete loss of compression and piston wedge will threaten at any significant load. True, the initial stage in the form of a groove in the zone of the piston top dead center can exist for a rather long time. From the stage of the beginning of the destruction of the coating and until it's stripped off the aluminum layer, the car can travel tens of thousands of kilometers, if it is lucky. It is interesting that many people buy contract units which already have a risk in the TDSC zone, hoping for a miracle. There are two treatment options, either a new block, better from the restyled BPD, BPE engines, the problem is not so widespread there, or a liner, since the inter-cylinder distance allows you to put a liner with an upper stop without any special tricks. The main thing is to act carefully, the block is weak enough, too much interference can damage its geometry. But the set of problems is far from being exhausted by this. The timing drive is in practice more troublesome than any chains and belts. The hub of each gear is a small mine. If the crease holes become clogged or the gap grows, then the gear will stand up. If the pump nozzle wedges, the rocker roller will die, followed by the camshaft. The wiring to the unit injection is also consumable. The exhaust manifold made of steel cracks, it's easier to install a Chinese cast iron during repairs. You can add more oil leaks from the turbine and tandem pump, but against the background of problems with the cylinder, these are triples. And yes, contract motors are in short supply, since they are very much needed by numerous transporters who have more mileage and do not pour diesel fuel there. Perceived by many as an ideal Volkswagen Audi engine of modern times, the 3 liter V6 turbo diesel is in fact more reliable than the inline 5 and gasoline FSI engines but by a measure it's far from a masterpiece. During the release of the Touareg, two generations of these motors have changed. Typical representatives of the first are BUN, BKS, and the second BKE and KACA motors. They are similar, but there are enough differences in both the fuel equipment, turbines and attachments, and the piston can be different. They can be distinguished by the presence on the second generation of the fuel supply pump motors near the engine shield. The funniest thing about the new family of motors is that their cast iron sleeves are bulging. Of course, this is cast iron and you can just kill it. This kind of problem is rare but regular and the treatment is the same as with other motors, liner. The reasons are most often in the failure of the fuel equipment or the increase of soot or dampers into the cylinders. The timing mechanism here is the same as that of the 4.2 FSI engines with strong short timing chains, unsuccessful upper chain dampers and a long thin drive chain for the oil pump and balance shaft. True, due to low operating speeds and a low temperature, such a timing belt on 3.0 diesel engines can travel 300 or more thousand kilometers. But it remains just as expensive and problematic to repair since it is located on the flywheel side. A more common but relatively inexpensive problem is intake manifolds and their flaps. At the tempers, the dry roads fly off and they had to be seriously modernized because the tempers are heavily wedged with soot inside. The new well roads are with hemispherical heads while the old ones have just a flat head. In an amicable way, you need to change the entire intake 
The new dampers sit more firmly in their place, but the old ones could fly off the axis and go straight under the valves, causing damage to the cylinder head and sometimes pistons. Another common problem is the breakdown of the intake throttle valve. It's electric and serves both to shut down the engine and to reduce no emissions, slightly reducing flow at low load. Slow operation of the damper or its failure leads to a lack of traction or simply the inability to start the engine. And if the diesel engine works at a distance, it will not be drawn out. Antifreeze leaks are quite frequent. In addition to the increased chances of blowing the cylinder head gaskets, there are chances of oil heat exchanger and EGR leaks, pump cover leaks and of course all pipes with quick release fasteners, especially if the cars are more than 10 years old and the radiators are not washed every year. The fuel equipment is quite strong, but the quality of EGR performance is not very good. Even the versions with a particulate filter pollute the intake a lot. And for a diesel engine, the smooth operation of the fuel pump in the tank is very important. This is exactly the problem for the Touareg. Overall, the 3.0 V6 is not a problem-free as we would like it to be. Breakdowns happen, repairs are expensive. But you'll have to do it because used units are very expensive from $2,000 for a bare engine of unknown origin. From the good news, with careful operation the motor resource can be 500 plus, there are also plenty of examples. And only old gasoline V8 or 3.2 V6 are more reliable than this diesel engine, but they differ in appetite and the age of cars with them is noticeably older. So it turns out that on Touareg after restyling this is the best choice with practically no alternatives. The Monstrous V10 engine is literally two R5 motors that are put to work on a common crankshaft. The same technical solutions, only all the elements are twice as large, much as exclusive and extremely expensive. Monster with a torque of 850 nm literally destroys the automatic transmission and the transmission as a whole, but in operation it's a little more reliable than the usual R5 due to a lower load on average and more stable thermal mode. However, the problems with the piston and others are the same here, and solving them will be even more expensive. This information about the problems on Volkswagen Touareg first is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.